So hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and I'm sitting here with Donovan, the recovering Democrat Sadiq, in all his baldness. <laughs> yes, yes, the black uh, Yule Brenner. Yes, indeed. And so on this show, we promote black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are a great people, but we can always be better. And I want to say this right off the top of the show. I've had um, a couple of people last week uh, one person, I won't name him, which was very shocking to me, and I'm sad to see him leave, but he emailed me and said that he was no longer going to be watching the show because I said something, uh, I, I disagreed with him somehow, and I told him and never responded back that I, I don't recall that conversation. Um, I don't recall going in on you. In fact, I haven't done that in a while on the show, and so um, I, I would just, you know, on here want to say my apologies if it felt that way. And he said, you also said that I was skipping your comments. Also, you guys been on YouTube a long time, know that a lot of times comments get filtered out. Um, I never go in and um, and uh, filter out comments. For one thing, I'm too busy to be reading to even do all of that. So I did not do that again. My apologies. And then someone else who, you know, is a faithful listener of the show basically said that she was looking at Donovan and I sideways because of the commentary we had in regards to all oh, the sister uh, Asia Maynard, who um, unfortunately was uh, found dead, if you will, after going on mm. a date. And so she basically said that we were kind of blaming her, which we weren't. If you watch the show, we were not blaming her. We were just having a rounded discussion about really how not to be in that situation and things like that. But I'm saying all that to say, and I, I obviously, you know, people do not agree with you all the time, and I'm okay with that. But what I wanted to say is, for one, I'm not one of those people who like to offend people. So if I have offended you, I am sorry. But the other thing is, we're not always going to agree on the same thing. And I think that's what makes the world go around. We have different opinions, but can we get along at the end of the day? You may like tomatoes, and I may not like tomatoes, but can we still get along, right? Do we need to mm -hmm. internalize everything to the point to where I'm blocking you, I'm deleting you, I'm subscribing, or I want to... I like. It's for me, and I've always said this, it's all love here and I want to keep it that way. And so if you have a disagreement or something, you know, reach out or whatever, but to, to, to do things in such a, a final way, I just think, you know, I mean, it's your right. But again, I just want to put that out there. We're going to have a wide discussion about a lot of things on here. We're not always going to agree. And as you see, Donovan and I, a lot of times we don't agree, but after over 30 years plus, we are still friends. So, Donovan right, exactly. would say, you know, and, and you know, and, and you bring up a good point. And that's the problem with our society. Everybody's got this all or nothing uh, team mentality. Like, oh, you know, if you're not a uh, Patriots fan, you know, you can't be my friend and all this other stuff. You know, everybody's supposed to have a difference of opinion. If you don't, then we live in a communist society. Yeah, right? absolutely. And so, Right. Uh, moving into our topic, we are going to be talking about that of uh, Delicious and her uh, real name is Sandra Davis. Uh, Delicious, of course, you guys know, was on the Flavor of Love. That's how we got to know her. And listen, don't lie to kick it. I know y'all watch Flavor of Love. I watched the Flavor of Love. I thought it was very entertaining and funny. I like Flavor Flav. Uh, P.E. fan, first concert I ever went to. Also, we're going to be talking about that of uh, Raymond Santana Jr., as you guys may or may not know, he is part of the Central Park Five, now called the Exonerated Five, in which he and four of his friends, some of them he met, some of them he didn't, were uh, uh, erroneously accused of raping a white woman in New York, uh, in Central Park, and I think it was 1988 or something like that. Uh, some of them spent upwards of 15 plus years or so um, in prison for a crime that they did not do. And they're now called the Exonerated Five because it came out that they didn't do it. They were pretty much set up by the DA and a whole host of other things. All right. So in uh, 2019, they met on Instagram. And it sounds like Candy Burris of uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta and a whole host of other things. Uh, she was instrumental in setting them up. And they dated for, I think it was like six months or so. Six and then months, they ended yeah. up getting married in 2020 during the pandemic. Um, and they were married for about 20 months from that point. And so uh, late recently, the last couple of days ago, we found out because people go to the Internet about everything that they're doing and what color underwear they're wearing, what they ate last night. Right? Everybody needs to know what they're doing. So anyway, sounds like Delicious went to uh, her Instagram and she said the following. And uh, sorry, but it says, uh, 
Hai or Han or something like that. I pray uh, for you to heal through this. No one deserves the pain that comes with the narcissist I'm currently dealing with. The mask these men wear is almost like two different personalities. They come in dressed as everything you pray for and in return into or turn into everything you never wanted. They're always the victim. They never, they're never wrong. I'm trying to read her writing. Um, they're never wrong. And everything is your fault. Nothing you do is good enough. Their victim card is elite. I think they carry the black card of victims. It never runs out, never expires. But seriously, I pray you get out of this with ease and start your healing process. Unfortunately, narcs, narcissists, uh, do not change. They suffer from childhood traumas that cause them to be wired differently and they don't know how to heal and break away, uh, break a uh, break it away uh, it or I, I don't know just her writing okay then she also goes on the bottom i guess she says something else it says this has saturated my soul and penetrated my heart because i'm not alone i never want to be misunderstood but this isn't just something happening to me i pray for all women and children who suffer from not understanding how mm -hmm. not huh no, go ahead. Good. Go oh, not how uh, from suffering, not understanding how they help themselves or their loved one who suffers from childhood trauma. Um, I didn't leave, um, and it, uh, something like, and I can't see the bottom of it, but basically, he left her. He said, She says he left us, so she didn't leave him. What she said, she said, I stuck it out. What she said, I didn't leave him, he left us, and she's brokenhearted for lack of better words. And so, Donovan, okay, so, so basically. Let me finish this. So it has been playing out over the internet. And then he goes on to his Instagram. He posts a video of him, I guess, saying he's back and he's flexing and all that in the mirror, you know, I guess putting himself out there. I don't know. Um, and then her ex-boyfriend basically says that side she- dude. Side dude. Yeah, side dude. She needs a real man or whatever. And then Raymond goes on and says, I don't want her or something like that. A bunch of kitty nonsense, if you ask me. But we're going to delve into the statement- that delicious said um, from all angles. And so Donovan, what say you? Well, again, delicious is Miss Charles. Is that her, her maiden name, Charles? Uh, Davis. Oh, Davis. Okay. Uh, Miss Davis is. Oh, and I should say that she actually, on one of the episodes of Flavor of Love, became um, Mrs. Flavor to some degree. Yeah. <laughs> she was selected again over that of New York. <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, this woman is in her 40s now, okay? And she met this dude who is in the, part of the Exonerated Five who spent a lot of years in prison. Now, when you were in prison as a child and you're in prison, was he one of the ones that was in prison with the, the grown folks as a teenager or was that the other guy? And that was the other guy, Corey. Okay, the other guy. But still, he still went in there at a young age and was yes. in there with a, bunch, with a bunch of men. Correct. Now, using our common sense, a person that goes into prison as a young man or young teenager has trauma to begin with because you're in there. You know, you're innocent. You didn't do anything and they victimized you and like that. So what I'm saying is it's going to take that man a lot of time to heal. So if you're going to deal with the person that has that kind of trauma in his life, that's something that, that should always be at the back of your mind and how this man deals with it. Now, statistically, 80% of all marriages, men do not leave. In 80% of all marriages, women leave. Men stay. Women don't leave. And you know, and it kind of makes sense, Demetra, because wouldn't you agree with this? If I have a side chick and I got my wife, why would I leave? Because we, we want both. We want both, right? Because that's how men think, okay? We're, until we get caught, okay? And then you guys, oh, I'm out. I'm leaving. And, you know, and that's understandable. But... We have to ask ourselves immediately as this relationship crumbles after two years, this woman, did she change her behavior when she became a wife? She's still posting Instagram pictures. You know, I'm not saying, you know, it is not for me to say what's right and what's wrong in anybody's relationship. But if I'm going to get married to Demetra, I know I can't be uh, going to the uh, strip clubs like I used to. I might not be able to go anymore at all because she's supposed to be the number one. Did this woman's behavior change? And again, ladies, you guys are always thinking as a woman like you should, but you got to think of how a man thinks. I don't want my wife showing everything that I'm working with. 
Do you see what I'm saying to my buddies and my friends? And I can tell you, I don't really follow her, but I can tell you if you go to her Instagram or whatever, a wife doesn't post those type of pictures, especially with the man that is healing and you know being broken and all that other stuff. And I'm just saying, it's kind of funny. And I'm not saying she's in it for the money. I don't know that or whatever, because he did get a bag. But isn't it kind of strange that as soon as he got a bag, because I mean, look at the brother. I'm not saying I'm all that or nothing like that. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, I got my issues and all, but, and then you look at her, look at her dating history. She's always dated men of money, rappers and athletes, Rick Ross. You guys remember she dated Rick Ross for a, a, a time and, you know, you can go on and on down the list. If this man came up to her in a club on an everyday swing, Demetra, do you think this woman would even give that dude a time of day? Um, I don't know. I, 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 off the rip, I would probably say not likely, but I want to, mm -hmm. I, 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 obviously I want to address this, the statement, but I want to address yeah. what you said uh, in regards to uh, Insta pictures. And I also want to say kudos to you for trying your best to defend, you know, Raymond, because you don't know what happened in their relationship. But let's right. go with your statement of the Instagram pictures. Hell, didn't he already know she was, you know, post a salacious picture sure. on Instagram before he slid a ring on her finger? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. To I would just think that he knew who he was wife and right. It wasn't a right. secret. So sure. a lot of times people get in relationships and they want you to, you know, because obviously I'm sure he saw him. So I'm sure that was attractive to him. So now you put a ring on. And let's just say that was the issue because we don't know. And everybody was laughing on Adam when, when he put that ring on her. Yeah. But it's like, say, let's say it was the Instagram pictures, which we don't know. I mean, that's something you should have taken consideration before you asked her to marry her. If that was uh, marry herself, mm -hmm. if that was an issue, I mean, people get in relationships and want people to change. Right. Like, I know I met you and you was on Instagram showing all your goods and stuff, but now I want you to stop because you're gonna be my wife. And it's like she may or may not do that, but I mean, you kind of got to take it as is because she mm -hmm. wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a secret. It was not like you found out she was on back page or something. <laughs> or was or was she? I don't know, but it was she was something she wasn't um, hiding, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. And as far as the bag is concerned, bag being money, yeah, he was awarded about forty-one million dollars, you know, due to the lawsuit and stuff of him being falsely accused of the Central Park uh, situation. I just said that he is worth about five million dollars now. I don't know what happened to the money. But well, remember, worth, remember that uh, thing had to be split up between the five, so that's about right. Okay, so yeah, so. Uh, so the, true. So he's got about $5 million and she's got, it said worth about $300,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they got, both of them got what you call some money to some degree. So mm -hmm. I don't know how much of the bag she was chasing. Maybe she legitimately liked him, but I did remember the conversation, people calling him a sucker and all of that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. but it, I mean, I don't know. He's been in relationships before he's been out of, you know, prison uh, for some time and so it's not like he just fresh out the prison and delicious was there waiting hey honey you well, know well, well, well here's the thing that uh, nobody brings up and um and and i've been talking about it for years we've been talking about it for years how many times have i said demetra men real men do not move in with a woman in an interview she was saying how you know she invited him to come to her spot whatever and you know she he ended up moving in with her Fellas, it doesn't matter how much money you have. You do not move in with a woman because when mad day comes and it will come, you are on your way out. You get your own. A real man gets his own. Right. So I guess, I mean, I don't know the dynamics of their living situation, but they were married nevertheless. And they yeah. have an irreconcilable differences. Basically, you know, that there is no hope of a reconciliation. They had enough. Uh, well, so, yeah, he's broken up with him. But let's go ahead and look, delve into her statement a little bit, shall we? Mm -hmm. So, you know, she basically says no one deserves the pain that comes with a narcissist. OK, so a victim, victim, well, I'm I mean, a let's victim. Look at, let's look into it. I don't know. I only them to really know what's going on in the right. But, it's, but, but it always seems like, you know, you ladies and I'm just I'm just uh, from observation. I'm just noticing that every time things don't go the way you, uh, you wanted to go or the relationship doesn't work out. You, you you guys immediately go to victim mode. 
Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she is, maybe she's not. I don't, mm -hmm. like, again, I don't know what happened specifically in their relationship, but she is accusing him of being a narcissist. A narcissist is one that is all about themselves. It's me, 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 me. Never, never, never you, but always me in a good way, right? Right. And so she's accusing him of being that. And she says there's a lot of pain to come um, with uh, dealing with a narcissist. And I think most of us have. And listen, I'm going to say this right off the rip. I think all of us have a, a propensity to be a narcissist to some degree. We are, by human nature, we are all got a little selfishness in us where we want it to be about ourselves. But some people have an unhealthy dose of narcissism, right? Where it's it's, it's unhealthy to, for them and for everybody else. And so I have been with a person or two or three or four. Four or five. Right? Then a narcissist, right? It's me, 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 me. I, 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 I. It's all about me. There's and no oh, I and we. Again? There's no I and we. Yeah. And so I agree. It, it, it's it's a, it's draining to be with somebody who is narcissistic, right? Can I ask this one question though? Sure. Why does she have to go to social media? Because everybody rather, does. Yeah. Rather than uh, therapy. You know, why do we, you know, why does she have to put it? Because I'm just saying the way it looks is like she's trying to get ahead of the story because when he says his part and that side dude, it's looking a little bit different now, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why people go, go to social media. Um, and they do for everything. I don't care what it is. They go to everything. They play their situation out mm -hmm. in uh, social media. And the unfortunate part about going to social media when you do that, mm -hmm. it does kind of take the uh, reconciliation off the table because now you've said some things about me in front of the world that can't be taken back. It's just a lot going on, right? Right. And so people tend to think that social media is the judge. It sometimes becomes the jury and the executioner because it can ruin a person's career or whatever if you think about it. But I don't know. I just think people should abstain, especially when it comes to emotions, because when you're emotional, and I and I know people who I'm friends with on um, social media, they're emotional posters. You could tell somebody got on their nerves or they man or they woman ain't doing this, that, and the other. They get on there and they make these, you know, these uh, these uh, esoteric uh, posts, if you will. And the, it's like, they, we know you're talking about your man or your woman, but they do it out of emotions. And so I, I just would not suggest people do it. All right. So the other thing she says is these masks, these men wear is almost like two different personalities. So... What is your your take on that, Donovan? She's saying that you men are two faced. You have two two different personalities, two masks. Well, well, have you ever seen that movie with Clint e or Sally Field, Sybil? Have you ever seen that movie? Yes, I have. <laughs> you want to talk about yes, men? We uh, men we have maybe two different parts. You have a soft side, and you got a hard side, but that's the nature of men. But women have a Sybil person that where it's, it's multiple things. We do. Multiple Ooh. things. So you can point all of that stuff out. But again, it takes two to make a, a relationship successful. Am I correct? Yes, yeah. I am correct. It takes two. So she knew what she was getting to, into. Like you said, he knew what he was getting into. But for some reason, he decided to leave. And maybe it that was the best thing for him and possibly the best thing for her. Because I've been in situations to where it's like, if I kill this person, I'm going to jail. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's best for me to leave before fisticuffs, you know, you know, come off. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, and, and as a woman, I can tell you, we go through a gamut of emotions on the, within a five minute time span. You know, <laughs> sometimes yeah, everything with a woman is how you guys feel. It's how you feel, how yeah. you feel. It has nothing to do with logic. It's how you feel. But so. You know, she says uh, the the men, these men wears are all, almost like two different personalities. And so obviously I would say, I would venture to say she's probably posting from a point of being hurt because as she said, I didn't leave him. He left me for whatever reason, you know, and so she's probably feeling a certain type of way. And so she goes to the Internet and because eventually people are going to find out that they were not together anymore. So yeah, you know, uh, supposedly they've been separated since November of last year. Right. So, you know, and, 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 and that brings up another thing. Notice because of the COVID, a lot of couples, you know, they're they're going their separate ways because it's like when you're working and stuff, you don't really spend a lot of your time with your significant other because you're working, she's doing the kids or whatever. And COVID has shown, golly, I want this person gone. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of a lot of people didn't make it out of the pandemic. Right. That I will say for sure. Um, 
But the other thing too is when she says these men wear, um, you know, they basically wear two different masks. Is it two different masks or is he, are you seeing him in a different light? Does something happen to cause him to shift um, in the way you see him? Or did he put on a different mask or do you just see him in a different way for whatever mm -hmm. reason? And so, because when you read stuff like this, it's, it's, it's just too simplistic to say, oh, well, he's wearing two different personalities, but it's like, nah, come on, let's, let's fill in the blanks a little bit. And, and you know, did something happen on your end or his end for you to draw that conclusion? Because surely when you met him and he don't put the call me Shirley. On finger, huh? Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> stupid. Uh, uh, airplane, right? Uh, yes, surely, surely um, when y'all met and he put the ring on your finger, you only saw one mask. But now that it's over, it's two masks. And so did you learn something else? Because they did have a short uh, period, period, period. If you will. Period. So did you just learn something different? And now you're trying to say he's two different people? Or was he always that? And the newness, and I call this the fluffy part of the relationship, did that become not so fluffy anymore? And now you're accusing him of being somebody he always was, you just didn't see? Or are you coming from a romanticism, escapism thing, something you saw in a movie? Because a man's nature is the hunt. Once the hunt is over, ladies, and once we, once we got you, you know, and, you know, the chase is done. It's, I'm not saying everybody moves on and says whatever, but you think about it. There's nothing exciting once the cat chases the mouse. The cat might play with it for a little while, whatever, and then after a while, what, what does the cat do with the mouse? Just walks away because the excitement is gone. Right, and so let's address that because you know I'm glad you, you you brought that up. And the problem is with a lot of people um, in relationships nowadays because we always hear well we don't people don't engage in the relationships our grandparents and some of our parents mm -hmm. um, engaged in. Uh, but I don't get this whole, well, I'm not excited anymore. You know how much not being excited has cost people by ending mm -hmm. marriages and relationships and you have to move and this, that, and the other. So you see something else that sparkles and it glitters. And then, so I'm going to go over there because that excites me. And then six months later, that is not as exciting to you is anymore. And then you just keep relationship hopping and you never just grow roots or build anything with anybody. And I find that true today, especially People just, you know, attention they, span is not then, there. Yeah, but then you ask them, why did you end the relationship? Or why? I don't know. I just I don't know mm -hmm. it anymore. Or I just, you know, this is like you really don't even know it. So, uh, to or, me, or we think the grass is greener on the other side. Right. That we find out that it's concrete. And those people, to me, are the most uh, among the most dangerous people to be in a relationship with because. They go all in in these relationships, you know, making people feel like they really love them and stuff. And then, oops, I'm not inspired anymore. I see her or him over here. And now I'm going to go be with them. And so what you do is you leave a trail of broken hearts and destruction yeah. behind you because you don't. And to me, saying that I'm not excited about relationship is a sign of immaturity, right? Because mm -hmm. you realize yeah, like you said, I mean, we was first dating. Yeah, I was all into you. You was all into me. I just couldn't get enough of you. I love everything you did, everything you said. And now it's like, okay, you're getting on my nerves. But guess what? I'm still going to love you at the end of this. If it's not something that's horrible, I'm still going to love you. We going through a rough patch, a dry patch, or whatever the mm -hmm. case is. And we just need to work through it so we can get to the other side. Right. You know, and the funny thing is everybody can, can relate to that experience. I mean, you, there's no way you can tell me uh, you got into a relationship and everything was copathetic, copathetic all the way through. Remember when you first meet that person? Let me get your number. Okay, whatever. Then the guy's calling you every day, calling you every day. And, you know, he's doing nice things for you or whatever. Or she's doing nice things for you, bringing you food or something like that. You know, you're just excited about the relationship. And then, you know, the the, the cheeks get clapped or whatever. It goes on and it becomes a, a, a routine. Then the calls aren't coming as much. The flowers aren't coming because now you guys are in the life, the reality of what you need to do. And then it, it just becomes a routine type situation. And you're just kind of like, mm whatever. And we can all really, I mean, if you really look at this relationship here, I could relate to this, to, to, to what they're going through. Because look at, okay, I'm a man, so I'm visual. That woman's got cheeks. Obviously, she's had surgery done. Even when she was with Flavor of Love, she was thick back in the day. She had the dimples. I love women with dimples. The woman is highly, highly attractive. But yet, with all of that done, this man still left her, ladies. Well, I mean, but again, we he I don't as far as I know he hasn't said why, but I mean right, right. But what I but, but what I'm saying is, you know, the physicality, even as a man, as sexy as I am, 
that's not going to keep a woman. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that that's the situation or the thing, but what as men is visual, we're looking at him like, damn, you got her. Damn. Right, but what? But what's behind the booty, brother? What's behind the booty? What's exactly. What's behind that's... the booty? And I say this a lot. Y'all men get caught up in this big, giant booty. I was talking to this guy not too long Little ago. Little booties need love. Little booties need love. Yeah, but I was talking to this guy not too long ago. He was like, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. And it's like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a, a woman having a big booty. But it's something wrong with that's all you want her for is her big, giant butt. And, you know, basically how she looks. You didn't care about anything else. And then you'll be the dude that's just grown and mad. And, you know, and God forbid she's a black woman because then you're going to attach her and to all black women, all oh, black women is black women that I ain't gonna get no more black women because except instead of saying, listen, I should have looked behind what was behind the booty and see if she was worthy of me getting a relationship with her. What is her mind like? What is her heart like? Well, you know, well, she, again, men don't think that we don't care about that. Y'all we, should, we, though. yeah, we don't care about your should. degrees, we don't care about how much money you make, we don't care. We're a visual. Notice creature. big booties say and do stupid things. Two, yeah. okay? Right. A big butt does not mean that everything is all inclusive. Now, when I say that is, it doesn't mean that she's going to be, uh, she's going to come with a good mind, a good heart. She knows how to save and spend money. That doesn't mean anything. It just means right. that she has a nice fluffy butt you're going to have fun with until you get tired, as you said, like your cat with the bird and go get a new booty to play with. Excuse right. Well, remember, re remember when you were a dancer for BBD? And they've tried to warn us. You can't trust a big butt and a smile. That, right. That's what they were talking about. That's exactly what they were talking about. Right. But somehow in, the, in this new millennium, y'all still trust the culture tour is going on. They're, they're, they're putting the message back out there. I mean, you got dudes out there who's encroaching on 70 years old making babies. Still. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and getting caught up in, ha, let's just take a commercial break here. How are you an old man in your 60s and 70s getting caught up in the child support system still? How? That Viagra gets a lot of people in trouble. I'm just saying it because I'm sure most of those men was in the child support system for all of their life. And then you get out and then you get with a young tenderoni with a big old booty. And then you knock her up because, you know, y'all men are fertile until down and then you die. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you knock her up and then y'all don't last. And then she all up in your social security. I don't know if she gets social security, but she could get all your pension and all this other stuff. You pay yes. her bad and child support until you die. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, you, you, know, you know, again, you hit it right on the nail. As sexy as I am, I have to be careful with dealing with these young tenderonies, like he said, because I know they're trying to get my bag. I know. Right. That's why you need to keep your bags in your pants, okay? <laughs> it's hard to do. It's hard to do. Right. So let's move along to some of these other parts. And so she says, sure. uh, they're always the victim. They're never wrong. And mm. so to your point, you was like, well, she's playing the victim. I just think this. And I'm speaking from experience. And Donovan, you can speak from experience, too. And y'all watch I'm sure y'all can speak from experience. In every relationship, especially at first when the breakup happens, we blame the other person. It's your fault. Oh, how dare you do this mm -hmm. to me? Right. And then once you really settle down and you think about everything, you're like, well, OK. Maybe some I things I could have done different. Yeah, I could have did some things differently. I didn't read the tea leaves. I didn't see the signs. I just was oblivious. Blah blah blah. This, that, and the other, right? And so I also will say this: we are all responsible for what we do and how we feel. I don't care what you say, because people say, "Well, you just made me feel a certain type of way, and you did this." No, listen. Nobody can make you feel a certain time. Well, I don't care what they do or they say to you. It is how you receive it and what you choose to do with it, right? So when we take things personally, then we we, we tend to make ourselves the victim when we're not really, right? Because you're giving people control over you to put you in a victim state of mind. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, I don't care what it is they do. If they cheat on you and you come home and they got a woman full of 10 women, a bed full of 10 women in your bed. Oh, what a beautiful sight. <laughs> It's horrible what they did, but they cannot make you act a certain way. That is fully within your control. I know some people will disagree, but if you really think about what I'm saying, it's pretty true. Right. Well, let me ask you this, Demetria, because like I said, you, 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 you let, let me say this. Let me say this correctly. You haven't been in a lot of relationships, but the relationships you have been in have been fulfilling. You know what I mean? You ain't like you were just dating, dating, dating and all this other stuff. 
in the relationships that you've been in, why, you know, why didn't it work out in regards to, you know, the situation? Well, because because you, you were in some really, really, you know, good relationships and you're a good woman, you're attractive, you're uh, smart, you got all the tangibles, but yet at the end of the day, it seems to me as a uh, friend of yours, um, it seems like you're always dating lower. Well, <laughs> let me remove this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it's. Uh, I guess I should start off saying that I'm 50 years old. I'm 50. Okay, so I've been here for a minute, to to say mm -hmm. the least, and I've been in you know some relationships, and I, I would say average. Or it may be even less than average for a 50 year old because a lot of my relationships tend to last a long time. Long time, like, right? Five, exactly. Seven years, yeah. seven years, whatever. Uh, I will say this I'm old and wise enough to know that it's never all one person's fault, right? Mm -hmm. I have to take some of the blame too. Um, <clears throat> and even though I've been through some horrible things in relationships that, uh, in some senses, broke me or and nearly broke me. I still take some of the blame, you know, because there's some things that um, we should see that we don't see and um, things like that. And, you know, and people are they have their right to not want to be in a relationship with you anymore. It's their right to do it. Only problem I have with is how they do it. Right. I don't because um, I, I can personally say that I never intentionally and cold heartedly broke somebody's heart. Now, I've, most of my relationships that I was in. I ended the relationships, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I ended it after a whole bunch of nonsense. Right. So, but I, I I never was one of the type of people that go out and just, just destroy somebody out of being selfish or whatever. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. like I said, I mean, um, relationships are difficult if you have no knowledge of self, right? If you have no knowledge of self. And I say that because a lot of times we get in relationships with people and they might see you growing and they take that as a threat yeah. to them because right. they have no knowledge of themselves and they have no personal foundation of where they're going, what they want to do with their life and anything like that. And so when they see you and I'm not necessarily speaking to myself, I'm saying in general, when they see the, their partner, they take that as a threat mm -hmm. and they would rather not be in that relationship than to say, well, damn, baby, when you going, I'm going with you. How can I help you get there? And I imagine you making more money than me and you do it. I'm not mad at that. I'm glad because what you got, I got and vice versa. And so if you have no knowledge of self within that relationship and just by yourself, then you're not going to be a good partner for anybody because you're always going to be looking for validation outside of yourself right if you don't valid wake up every day and valid validate yourself and say i am somebody i'm important if i'm with somebody or i'm not with somebody i'm still going to be great in every way shape or form blah 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 blah, blah all the affirmation you want to attach to yourself if you don't believe that about yourself you have absolutely no business being in a relationship with other people because you're going to be an energy thief and you're going to drain the life out of that person and you're going to make life miserable for them because there's nothing they can ever say or do to make you feel better because you're supposed to do that for yourself. I'm glad you brought that energy thing up and draining of a, you know, that thing, because there's uh, I saw one thing where they were talking. I think it was the Crimson Cure channel. And mm -hmm. she was saying how there are some people, not just just women, but there's also men that will suck the energy out of you. And if you look at Delicious's uh, history of dating in the public, so, you know, she dated a lot, a lot of guys. All these guys were with her, but nobody wiped her up. And I'm just speculating. Do you think that maybe it's an energy thing with her in regards to her relationships? And that's why I could be possibly a reason why he was just like, look, I'm out. This is just, you know, you know, too much of a thing. I mean, really, without me knowing any details yeah. about what the thing is, I mean, let's just say if it was an energy thing, I think for a lot of times, men, y'all see these beautiful women and there's nothing wrong. I think everybody should be with somebody they like, you know, you see these beautiful women and a lot of times y'all go about it the wrong way to uh, be with these women. Y'all, mm -hmm lead with your wallets per se and when i say lead with your wallets i mean you're talking about oh girl i could buy you this i could buy you that i could do this I you know do i don't do none of that right <laughs> and then, so when you get with that woman then I I mean, 
But are you able to maintain that? Can you right. continue that? Can you continue taking her to Morton's and Ruth Chris and you know all these big high end restaurants every you know week? And can you continue putting her in red bottoms and taking her all over the world? Eventually, I mean, I don't know if you Jeff Bezos or somebody you can do mm -hmm. that. But yeah. what woman would put her man through all that trial and tribulation? Well, I mean, but see, y'all can't you can't blame the woman if that's how you step to her. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I've had men step to me like that, and I'm just one of those. I'm listen. Fellas, I am one of those rare gems. Yes, I said gem. Rare gems out there that, you know, if you come in with me with your money, I'm going to let you know right off the rip. I don't want to be into you for your money. Now, money is nice. Don't get me wrong. But I like, I want to know you. I want to like you. And before I even get to think about your money, I want to be into you. I'm one of those women who never, ever and could never just be with a man, especially could not lay down with a man for money. I just cannot. I, I can't even see how people do it but no judgment right mm -hmm. and so don't blame her because y'all stepped to her with all these expectations see because what happens is listen i'm gonna tell you right now when you would set expectations high yeah. don't be trying to come back down here boo i'm right. not gonna be eating that taco bell and i'm speaking about you know how some of these women probably think but you've been whining and dining me all over these steak restaurants and lobsters and crab legs and all of a sudden you want me to eat taco bell right yeah. it, it, so basically what you're saying is if if you flew Lufthansa or uh, uh, Delta, you know, and you you know you just get that 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 nice Delta thing or whatever it is that you know that high airline, and now you're on Spirit. <laughs> I'm just saying, and again, I'm not that type of woman, but I, I'm I, I, I'm defending yeah. the women that y'all call sack chasers because it's like, well, you probably knew she was a sack chaser, and you did you put forth the sack. And you did everything she wanted, and then now mm -hmm. when you said, "Okay, baby, let's go home and cook," well, or you know, let's 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 come back down to earth. She's like, "Nah, I ain't trying to do all right. of that." And then y'all no, wanted to be mad at her. Yeah, no, no, and I respect that, but it, but it also goes goes back to say, you are what you attract, correct? I, I would think so. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you're dressing like a stripper, and you know, and you and if you look at Mrs. Uh, Delicious and stuff, I'm not saying that you know he's like. What I'm saying is, when you you're living that three or four lifestyle and you're doing that and, and you're putting out pictures and you got the thirst traps out there. Is that what they call them? The thirst traps. Yeah. They, they, I mean, Whatever. if you, if you thirsty and you get trapped, whose fault is that? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's your fault. But what I'm saying is though, most of the guys that fall for that are of what ilk you see what I'm saying? So uh, uh, put it like this. You're not going to get a Jeff Bezos. Well, like you can, if he has low self-esteem, I don't really, right. I think, I think people get having money, Mm -hmm. With having high self-esteem, there's a lot of men out there, women with low self-esteem that got lots of money and they get taken as a sucker all the time. And so mm -hmm. I think we should work on our self-esteem and stop thinking because I have money, I'm healthy. And, 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 and as far as esteem goes, no, you have to have great self-esteem because people get taken to the bank all the time. But I mean, you, to I've never gotten taken to the bank. I, I, had, to, I had to put some women out. <laughs> right. Okay. What you mean you bought a tomato too many? Right. You know, hey, you remember the old girl that that one girl that I mean she had it all. Booty, ass, I mean, walking right. through the house naked. I mean, I had it all. And then she wanted to, she wanted to spin my bag. I was like, uh-uh, you got to go. Wait, let me tell y'all a story. Donovan <laughs> told her to go get some um to the store, go buy breakfast, and you know, they had laid and I didn't want to buy bread. I was gonna go buy bread, but she wanted to make breakfast. Yeah, so he gave her his card to go to the store, and 20 hours later, she came back with you know a, a handbag. A, 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 no, no, she can't. She came back with a, no, a handbag, you know, like, like a you know, those little brown bag. Remember when we were growing up that you put your wine in and stuff? Oh, that's yeah. That's how much groceries was in. The, that's all that time. And this is what she came back with, a little bag. You said she spent 140 bucks. $140 <laughs> and had a little bag. And I'm thinking, right. well, what did you buy? Now, soy sauce is soy sauce. You can get the big old bottle of soy sauce for what, $1.25? This chick came back with the little $6 bottle. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, it was like she was buying all the name brand stuff. And there's certain name brand stuff you should buy. But some stuff is just universal. Needless to say, that ended job, or it's partially what ended job yeah. relationship. Yeah. And she left the $20,000 carrot juice on the hood of your car. <laughs> right. Right. And look, when you disrespect a black man's car... <laughs> 
Um, but, you know, needless to say, I mean, listen, relationships are tricky um, and they're scary to some degree, yeah. right? Because just, you know, having a, a broken heart is just like, oh. Yeah, I haven't been in a relationship since, old girl. That was, what, three, three, three or four years ago? Yeah, it's been a while. Donovan, it's time, okay? Mm -hmm. It's time. But, you know, it's, it's a scary thing. And so I, I, I'm reading her comments, you know, and so I can tell she's coming from a broken heart because it doesn't right. sound are, like are you relating to the comments kind of? I'm, I'm relating to it on the surface. I'm not relating yeah. to it in agreement. So, and I feel like sometimes I have to preface things for certain people because mm -hmm. I relate to it does not mean I agree Wait, with it. it. I understand mm -hmm. on the surface because we don't know what happened in their relationship, right? Mm -hmm. I agree on the surface of, I mean, I relate on the surface of what she's saying. Now, do I agree with it? I don't know because I don't know if she's coming from a nefarious place or if she's being genuine, right? But I think we all can relate to being with somebody who we really thought we loved that loved us. Cause like she said, she didn't end the relationship. He did. And so clearly she's hurt. Um, I'm not saying it's an excuse to go to the internet and try to kill him up, but I, I can relate to it. I, I can relate to it. She's putting her feelings out there. She feels like she was with a narcissist, but I think once, once it all settles down, because when a relationship ends, it takes a while for this dust to settle down and people to say, okay, now that I've stopped crying, now that I, I'm not ruminating all day long about what happened and my heart is not in splinters, let me really assess what's going on here, right? And she said a good thing, I think, at the beginning. She says, I pray you find healing. It's like, no, you can pray for him to find healing, but it sounds like you need to find healing because you went to the internet and put him on blast as being a cheat and a liar and a narcissist and so he may very well be all of that, but there is something within her that needs to heal. And I'm saying that from mm -hmm. a person who, and I'm being transparent with y'all, I had to go to therapy. I was in therapy, you know, a couple months ago because I was traumatized. I really was traumatized by a, a, a past relationship and I needed to get some healing. Well, really healing to me also equates understanding of, you know, what happened and how not to be so affected by that again, regardless of who I end up with, right? And so I think that she needs healing and potentially he needs healing, especially like you said, Donovan, all the things that he's gone through with being in prison yeah. and being falsely accused. And I don't know if he's gone to therapy, but I think we all could benefit from therapy because a lot of times we don't get to sort out all of the things that we stored up as baggage really from childhood, right? Mm -hmm. We bring all that to our adulthood. And then we keep on just reliving a lot of things instead of saying, okay, close the legs, close my heart, close my mouth. Let me sit and just figure out what I need to do to get rid of some of this baggage. And I don't keep bringing it with me into different relationships. What do I finally need to do so I can be as whole as possible and healthy and healed as possible? I think those are the questions we need to ask ourselves before we get into another relationship and ruin ourselves or another person again. Well, let me, well, let, let me play devil's advocate here. And let sure. me ask the question that a lot of guys uh, want to know. Because I get, you know, questions about you in, you know, text messaging, emails and stuff you like know. this. I do. They're saying, what the hell are you putting up with her for? <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to put the eight down on her? You, know? right. um, you said you've seen the end of that movie, right? Right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. If she's burning my car and still, you know. Uh, right. Waiting to exhale. Um, but why is it that you think here you are, you have all the intangibles that you were told to do. You were raised with both your parents and even, a, you know, more than that, you got your stepdad as well telling you all these things of what, I'm, you know, you know what it is to be a wife. You, you know what it is. You know what it is to be a mother. You, you, you raised a, a, a spoiled daughter. Uh, rightly so. You're only one. So, of course, they're going to be spoiled. Um, but why is it that women like yourself are alone? Because I get that question about you all the time. Well, what's what's her problem? I you said, know, I, I don't I, if I can't speak for a person individually. Mm -hmm. I will say this. And I'm educated. Say, You're educated. I mean, you got you got all the tangibles. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I hold my own, but I'm not one of those women that's like, I don't need no man. I tell you all the time, I need a man's shoes. I had, I'm going to tell you, I had a dream last other night. Never mind. <laughs> she kicked Tylen to the curb. 
Man, I had a dream the other night. I was like, ooh, why am I dreaming about that? But L anyway. is not coming. L is not <laughs> coming. Eldra, Eldra is not coming, Demetra. I was like, damn. I mean, it was so vivid. It was like, I, I was thinking about it two days later, like, hmm, okay. But anyway, mm. um, I, I, I'm not trying, please try to follow me in this, okay? Yes. Because I, I mean, there's a lot of guys that want to know. They keep asking me, yeah. and I'm like, "What is?" I said, "No." I said, "I would choke her out myself." But right, it'd be some choke fest going on with me. Yeah. But I tell people, guys, when they try to talk to me, and you know, we go a little further into the courtship per se. Mm -hmm. I say, y'all seen a uh, part of the uh, thriller video where Michael Jackson says, "I'm not <laughs> like other guys," right? <laughs> I say that. To men, I'm not like other women, mm -hmm. not like a lot of women. I'm not like your average woman. And I don't right. say that in a bad way. I say that is because as y'all see me on here and everywhere else, I'm very articulate. Not that a lot of women aren't articulate. Um, I'm knowledgeable about a lot of stuff. I'm very resourceful. Um, but You're attractive. Yeah, you, you know, know to me, that's kind of last because, you know, attractive. You got a natural... Uh, build you know yeah, you know I, I, th those things are nice but eventually they'll fade as i don't look like i did when i was 15 20 25 whatever mm -hmm. but i'm one of those women that I, I i it's hard for me i'm intelligent okay and again i know there's a lot of intelligent women out there but i just find that a, a lot of men are intimidated by that they and, and then eventually they very true very true they become uh resentful of yes that. yes and that's why i always make the point to say that don't mistake an intelligent woman for a modern woman because traditional women can be intelligent too like when we mm -hmm. think of a traditional woman we think of oh yes honey i got the biscuits ready what do you want to drink honey I got mm -hmm. the house. that's what you think of a traditional woman she's like yes sir yes sir yes sir you don't think of a traditional woman like, okay, boo boo, yes, I got your food ready. Your um, mm. the clothes is washed, the house is clean. Meet me in the bedroom tonight. Also, I figured out a way how we can start a business and how to make things easier for you mm. to save and do this with the money. I know how to do stocks because I know how to do all that stuff too. You know what I'm saying? So, well, a lot of times men don't think of a woman being very well rounded, a traditional woman. They just think she's a servant, and so I I have issues. Or yeah, she's I, supposed to be a helper, not a servant. Yeah, but I can do all of that. I can bring in my own money and I can spend mm -hmm. yours too. And, you know, I can help grow the money and I, all of that, right? I'm not no gold digger. You know, you can look in my closet. I don't even have any, uh, a whole lot of designer stuff. I really don't, right? I'm not yeah. one of those kinds. I'm just not. I'm frugal. But she cleans know? up well, fellas. She cleans up well. Man. Okay. <laughs> and, and, it's, and, and I'm not even spending. So the point that I'm making is, I am a good woman. Now, mm -hmm. do am I perfect? No. Sometimes, and I will tell you this, this is why I said that about being intelligent, because sometimes it does come off as overbearing, right? And I've just been in a lot of relationships where I've had to kind of pick up the slack, if you will. Like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a woman, I'm a resourceful, I ain't gonna starve, I ain't gonna wait on you to get your shit together. So I'm, be, you know, and that's kind of my fault for sometimes ending up with men who, I, can I just say this? Get you somebody that believes in themselves. Mm -hmm. I can say that. Because if you are a person that believes in yourself and you get with somebody who does not believe in themselves, eventually everything that's going on in their life will be yeah. your fault. Yeah. It's your way. Because if you would have just, and if you would have just, an and mm -hmm. then this is what I've learned too. In my case, I'm speaking to me. I ain't speaking to all men. I'm speaking in my cases. A lot of the men are so weak mentally that they eventually start attaching to other women who tell them, oh, you're the greatest thing since apple pie. Yeah. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, well, maybe she just don't understand you. I mean, I've actually had women mm -hmm. that some of my you know, ex-boyfriends uh, would talk to come at me. Like mm -hmm. even on social media, they would get all up on some of my comments and say different things. And I'm like, wait a minute, Negro. I know, wait, wait, how she know all that about me? Right. Why are you discussing me with her? And so then they, like, if you talking to this woman, she don't even have the decency for you or whatever y'all trying to form to leave me out of it. And so what I'm saying is they're so weak mentally that they allow 
that woman in their conversation to demonize me and make me the bad guy. And that's why I say jealousy and a whole lot of things and resentment, all that comes into in play. And, you know, like I'm not where I want to be ultimately in life, but I'm getting there and I work hard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I work hard every day. I get my ass up. I work out. I do all of my work. And I sometimes I don't finish until the, at night and I'm dog yep. tired. And Donovan will say, tell y'all this, but a lot of times people don't understand what it takes to do the things that you do. They only see, uh, they only see the finished results, right? Right. Like with Donovan, for you, your example, you, they don't, people don't know that you spent 24 years of your life doing 16 uh, tours of duty all over fighting in wars and doing, they don't know right. that you amassed the success that you have because of the hard work and dedication and sacrifice that you put in, right? And the ass kicking my mom gave me at a young age to, you know, go be a man and do what you got to do. Not that bullshit. She was like, you know, get your education, get your foundation and all that other stuff. Look at Walter over there. What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> if y'all can't tell that, that's my brother, Walter. <laughs> We well, were just talking about um, Delicious and the Rain and Santana, but we're kind of going off into a tangent about yeah. relationships. Oh, we're at the point of talking about how people don't, they they only see the the finished product, but they don't see all of the stuff oh, that shit. went into making you who you are at the present moment. And so instead of them saying, well, let me work on themselves, myself, they get jealous and, you know, try to throw monkey wrenches in, mm -hmm. you know, to your situation instead of saying, well, damn. How do you how, what do you, how do you do what you're doing? Because I have people ask me all the time, and I I'm not one of those people like I'm not gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time. I give people advice all the time, and so it's it, so the the question answer to your question is a very convoluted one. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I can't. And some people will say keep a man per se, but I think maybe the other issues maybe they don't know how to keep me. Right, I don't know. Right. You know, you know, because the funny thing is, like, like I'll mess with or date like these girls that aren't very intellectual you know what i mean and it's like after the sex and everything is done and you know you're you know you could eat you could go drink to the clubs and stuff like that but when you actually when i when i'm actually sitting down and talking to them about real shit that affects us as black people or society as a whole what irks me is when they have no opinion oh, i never thought about that well, why aren't you, you know what, Donovan? A lot of men don't want a woman with an opinion. Like yeah. you, Donovan, you know me, and you've known me for we've known each other most of our lives. Yeah. I talk, but I'm not yeah. too talkative to where I'm like, nah, 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 nah. although that would be kind of hard to convince you guys because y'all see me talking a lot mm -hmm. on here, but I'm not a terribly talkative person, right. but I like to communicate. I, and have me too. I like to have a good I conversation. Read. I like to have an excellent conversation. I like to talk but sometimes, but a lot of men don't want that though. Well, well, you know, and, and the reason, you know, see, and, and, and those men are unrealistic because like I said, you can't be on Viagra all goddamn day. It's not going to work. So you, when you get to a certain age, you're going to be sitting here going like, wow, you like, like sometimes when I get in the bed, I'm like, you know, let's say the girl's next to me. It doesn't mean I'm going to be blowing her back out, you know, the whole time. Like, that means, <laughs> yeah. It's like good night or wow, look what's happening in the news today. Or, you know, I'll get my little uh, sleeping pills or whatever. Wow, it has niacin compadre, 36%. And, you know, you just you just do that. And then, you know, you'll look at somebody and you're like, you're just picking their brain. It's like when I call you, sometimes I just give you an update or you call right. me and give me an update. It's like, oh yeah, did you hear about this today? Blah, blah, blah. You know, there, there's no conversation. And then these Negroes get mad when they find out, oh, I didn't really know that person at all. And a lot of times it's because if you are an intelligent person, you do a lot of reading and research mm -hmm. and you, you're abreast of world affairs and all of that. But if you get in a relationship with somebody who is, you know, and I hate to say this, but ignorant to a lot of stuff, it, it, to them, they are going to be like, okay, that person think they know everything. They, they go yeah. with this and that again. They talk too much. Yeah, they resent it. It was like, but I've always been this way. I've always been abreast of things, well-versed and knowledgeable. You know, I, I've just always been that way. And I don't understand why people get mad and like they, yeah. they generally despise yeah. you for yeah. being smart. Right, right. You know, and the funny thing that, that you bring that up is it's funny how they can, and I'm talking about the women, you know, that are out there in general, they can tell you about getting the bag and living the 304 lifestyle, right? But 
they can't tell you anything about the future and saving money and where they see themselves in three to five years. And well, what's you know, going on with Russia and Ukraine? Ask somebody right. that. What's going, what do you think of the Russian yeah. Ukraine? Well, Ukraine? I don't care. They can do with black people. I don't give a damn. In okay. Ukraine, and, is that a bag? Right, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Could you tell me who who who's on your city council? Name me three black people on your city council. You know, they can't tell you any of that. And it's like, okay. And fellas, listen to me if you're listening to this podcast. The woman is the first teacher of your children. So if she has no intellectual curiosity, how do you think your kids are going to turn out? Exactly. In general, the foundation, you know what I mean? In general, the foundation. They say that one of the most important things you can do for your children before they start attending a formal school is to read to them. Do you know that Black people as a whole, not all of us, do not read to our children? Why? If you're on Section 8 or whatever you're doing, you're sitting at home during the pandemic, why aren't you reading to your kids? No, like you said the other day on one of your shows, we're giving them cell phones and saying, here you go, when they should, they should be reading a book. Yeah, well, you know, and this generation is a lot different from ours because we had to read. And in fact, when we were in school, we had to bring in current affairs every day. You yeah. remember having to do current affairs and yeah. then you bring it. So basically newspapers was fashionable yeah. back then. Mm -hmm. Remember, you get a clipping from the newspaper. It could be whatever it was in the news. And you had to cite your source. And, yep. and you stand mm -hmm. up in front of the class and say, well, today I read about there is a war mm -hmm. in Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. And this is what's going on. And I think, but it, it, so but back then it's like, this is stupid. Why do I got to do current affairs? But as you get older, it's like, oh, okay, I get what that was about. Because you need yeah. to be well-rounded. You need to know what's going on right. in the world around you. Well, you know, it's funny that, that you say that. I was talking to my nephew last night and I was getting on him as I usually do because he gets mad because his birthday's coming up, right? He's like, well, look, look, I've been getting him books, but he doesn't want to read them. But the point is he's going to have a, he's going to have an excellent book collection if he keeps all those books I've yet to given him. But here's the thing, comprehension. How many of these athletes or record artists Megan the Stallion. Oh, she's educated, but she's in a bad record deal. It's about comprehension and understanding the contracts. How well, why don't they understand them? Because they don't have any comprehension because they don't read enough. They don't know what this word means. They don't know what this is. That's how important it is. You can be the greatest athlete and the greatest rapper. Again, you got to understand them damn contracts. Reading is fundamental. Do you understand what you're reading? Can mm -hmm. you put two What's and two message? together? Mm -hmm. Can you think logically? Can mm -hmm. you think linear? Can you critically? Like, there's, there's a lot to it. So I find sometimes when I talk to people, and again, like, throughout my healing process, I have to say to myself, stop saying you're not intelligent. Stop telling yeah. people you're not smart. You are smart. You work for every bit of knowledge that you have. And a lot of it was given to me by my parents, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff. But I work for this. So I don't ever tell anybody I'm not smart again. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah. You, you know, used to I, keep that on the down low a lot. I, and I, I always wonder, like, why? Yeah, because because believe it or not, people get mad at me. Or in a, in, in, you guys probably can attest to that. They like to get mad at you for being smart. Like. They resent and don't like you. I mean, it, it was just, I, I I know how to deal with it now, but in the past, it really bothered me. So yeah, I was well, like, you know, I got friends okay. like that. You know, I got friends like that. They, they'll just stab me in the back any chance they get. Yeah, but it's like, you can do it too. I'm not doing anything hard. I'm reading. I don't watch TV. If I watch TV, it's selective TV. I go on YouTube and yeah. I watch something. I might watch a movie here and there. I, I like a lot of the documentaries. That, that's yeah, my movie. But I don't watch a lot of mindlessness. I purposely put things in my mind that I can use. And so, cause I like to teach people stuff too. And so I don't know, you know, but in regards to delicious and Raymond here, I, I should call her name Sandra. I mean, maybe that she wants to be called delicious. I don't know, but um, I wish them well. I really do. I mean, breakups are horrible. Um, I, I don't wish them on anybody unless they deserve it, but it, it's, it's a, it's a hard process to get, get through. It really is when you, want to spend the rest of your life with somebody and he's like, damn, we're not going to do that. Right. And and then ladies, if you're living that three or four lifestyle, get in the bag. Okay. Let's say you get a guy like uh, Raymond and you got the bag. You know, why is it that it's never enough? You know what I mean? It, it, depending on if that's what the situation is, yeah. but I mean, you just got to, you got to. Uh, yeah. I'm talking to the ladies out there that have that mentality. When you get a good man or you got the bag, Hey, work with that bag. 
Yeah, and I also realize that ain't nobody perfect and neither are you. Nobody's mm. perfect and, you know, deal with people and their flaws. If the flaws aren't too bad, then deal with it because it's nothing like growing old and like, damn, I done traded through a whole lot of relationships and now I'm sitting here by myself in my house with nobody. I could fall and trip and like Donovan said, the cats will be here like any minute now we're going <laughs> to feast, you know. Yes. So, you know, do your best to try to, uh, as they say, uh, settle down to a good choice and roll with it, right? right? So that's all I got. What about you, Donovan? Hey, again, um, ladies, gentlemen, it's rough out there. And let me tell you something, the worst thing that you can do, and a lot of those 80s mothers are finding out growing old by yourself, it's not all that it was cracked up to be when they were in their 20s talking about, I don't need a man, or a man talking about, I don't need a woman. There is nothing sexy about growing old by yourself, period. So, you know, don't wait until, you know, the wall hits or you're in a situation to where you don't have the tools to attract the man that you want. You're young, get it, go out there and get it and, you know, do the best you can in a relationship. All relationships don't work out. But then again, are you really doing your part to sustain what it is that you got yourself involved in? And I would say that is true for men too. Don't don't yeah. sit up, you know, after you done ran through all the uh, the 304s, as y'all would call it, all the 304s like a buffet. And then you're sitting up there to, at 60, 70 years old talking about, damn, I sure yeah. wish I had a Gertrude up in here right about yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at me. You know, you know, I like the 304s, but the thing is, I'm 50 something years old now. I, a, and I'm by myself and it's not cool. I got a dog. Right. And now you need you a woman. So again, we're going to put the auction back on on Sundays and get you a woman up out of here. So no need. Gonna, we're going to be going on a trip soon. No need. Oh, yeah, because your woman is in the DR. He, she's yeah. like, hey, Poppy, come back. Poppy, Poppy, I need your wallet, too. Poppy, bring your wallet. Too. Poppy, yes. bring, your wallet. Yeah, bring your wallet. I need a phone. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, we will see y'all on Sunday. Demetri K. Show at 5 p.m. Central Time. You guys be blessed and be good. And always, we have a pod, a pod, and we do have a podcast. iHeartRadio, mm -hmm. Spreaker, Spotify, mm -hmm. and Podbean. And we also have a cash app if you guys want to donate to that, a PayPal, Venmo, every little bit helps keeping this show going. We appreciate and love all of you guys who donate on a regular basis and those of you who want to, but just can we love and appreciate you too. And so anyway, we will see y'all tomorrow. Be blessed. Peace.